Hi everyone! So, since it's positively Baltic outside, and I'm sure that's not just the case for Scotland, as well as practically pitch black at 10 in the morning, apparently, I felt it was probably about time that I filmed my winter reading recommendations. So, I like to do these sort of every season, pick 10 books that I've really enjoyed, and recommend them to you based on whatever the season is, based on the themes, the topics, very obvious factors in some instances, maybe there's lots of snow in the case of winter, or in other instances they just sort of encapsulate a feeling that I have during this time of year and just love and would like to recommend to you. So, without further ado, let's crack on with the 10 books that I recommend to read this winter. The first one is probably one of the most obvious ones on this list because it is literally called A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabot. This is the first in the Mirror Visitor series, which is a YA fantasy series originally written in French. The English translations are published by Europa Books and the first three books are currently out, but if you if you do read French, for example, um, the whole series is out in French, or at least the first books are. I'm not actually sure if there's going to be a fifth book, um, but I think the series is complete and all the books are in French, but the first three are in English, which is still pretty good going given that they're pretty chunky as well. So a lot to translate and a lot to read and a lot to get your nose stuck into. I'm not sure if I personally do read a lot more long books in the winter, but there is something about a long book that I can completely sort of appreciate as being appropriate for the colder months. Because if we ignore the fact that it's been 2020 and 2020 was a unique year in itself, a lot more time is spent indoors in the winter, there's a lot more long evenings, it's dark for a long long time compared to the summer and for that reason you might find yourself huddled up with a lot more chunky books and the winter's pro- and, uh, as, and as I mentioned, A Winter's Promise is a nice chunker, but it's one that will completely capture your imagination from page one to the final page and you won't be able to put down because it's so immersive, it fully takes you to another world, a very unique world. This is unlike any YA fantasy I've read before and it's all about a young woman named Ophelia who has the ability to read the history of objects. So say she were to pick up a phone, although there are no phones, mobile phones in this world, um, she would be able to sort of know the history of this object, all the previous owners, what happened to them, how the phone transferred ownership, etc, etc. Um, she can also travel through mirrors, so she can go through one mirror and find herself in another place by exiting via a mirror in that area. Now there's lots of um, magical abilities in this world, it's not unheard of for somebody to have an ability and she has been married off or engaged off, she's been betrothed to a young man from a completely different citadel to hers and sent to go and live with his family in the run up to their wedding. She has no choice, she's not particularly pleased about this situation, she loves her job at the museum at home and she's been taken away from that and now thrown into what is a much more cutthroat political environment surrounded by strangers and people who wish her ill for whatever reason. All these threads obviously start to tie together as you read the books, but it's so interesting being an observer alongside Ophelia of this new world that she's been flung into because you're both so new to it and that really works I feel and I just think, like I said, very immersive and very evocative of the colder months because the new citadel that Ophelia finds herself in is covered in snow and it's pretty cold. So yeah, seemed pretty appropriate for winter. My next recommendation may partly be because I'm currently listening to the audiobook of book three and I'm just completely absorbed in it. It feels like the perfect colder month read for me and that's because it's a mystery. There is definitely something about a murder mystery, especially like a good sort of complicated, not necessarily thriller, but lots of like questions to answer storyline that feels so timely when it comes to winter and for that I wanted to recommend Truly Devious. Like I said, I'm, I'm reading book three at the moment um, which is called The Hand on the Wall I believe, why well, I've already forgotten the title, but I'm reading book three and very much enjoying it. I did read the first two in summer but I'm, I'm very much feeling the vibe during these months so I think it is appropriate plus it's set in a freezing cold climate, it's set in Vancouver and it's constantly being described as very cold and you're constantly made aware of how cold it is and I think again that that just suits this time of year. Now the first three books in the series cover a complete story arc. I don't know if there's going to be more books in the series but you should have all the answers to the mystery by the end of book three which I'm really hoping for and really looking forward to but what what is fun about this series is that it's a sort of two timeline mystery. So it's set at an elite boarding school which 
was established back in the early 1900s and back in its early days the uh, owner of the school, the founder of the school had his wife and his daughter kidnapped, he didn't have them kidnapped but they were kidnapped and there was a whole mystery surrounding that. We are now in the present day following Stevie, a new student at this school who dreams of becoming a private investigator or a detective or an FBI agent but wants to be, you know, a detective of some sort and she is so interested in this past crime and constantly sort of looking into it and trying to solve it but then dark stuff starts to happen in her own timeline so we have the layers of mystery between what's going on in the present day as well as the past mystery and you do actually get flashbacks to the early 1900s and the characters and what was going on with them so it works really well, I love that two timeline thing. I think the early 1900s setting also harkens back to your sort of Agatha Christie-esque crime novels, you know, I feel like there's something quite atmospheric about that. And overall it just works so well, I love that kind of multi-layered mystery. And you get answers at the end of each book but you also get new mystery introduced and continuation of mystery from the previous books. So I still have so many questions and I'm looking forward to having them answered in book three. On the topic of a book with multiple timelines and a bit of mystery, I had to mention The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. This is another one that is just so atmospheric and it isn't necessarily like a crime book or like a traditional mystery book but it is full of actual mystery like you have so many questions. It is about a young woman who is an amateur biographer and she has been asked by one of the world's most famous authors to write their biography. So this author um, is beloved but has always told different stories of her past and no one really knows the truth and she's written to our protagonist to say you come to my house I tell you the truth and uh, you write my biography which obviously she can't turn down so she goes off to this authoress's house and um, takes notes on what she's telling her so you get the story of the authoress as well as some background to her family before she was born and just the whole um, sort of aristocratic family that was associated with her home and then also the current timeline of our amateur biographer and you become so invested in all of these characters. I loved our author, I loved our author and I loved our amateur biographer. They're very different characters but they're both very very fully formed and very interesting and they make a really interesting combination. Plus I loved how everything gradually started to fit together from all the timelines plus there was some twists and turns that I did not see coming. It was so incredible, so beautifully written and just felt like the perfect book to sort of wrap yourself up with on a cold evening in a mug of hot chocolate or cup of tea by the fire so we'd highly recommend this one for winter. Returning to our snowy settings, the next book I'd like to recommend to you is actually a fairy tale retelling and it is a fairy tale retelling of a fairy tale you can probably guess by the context of this video and that is a retelling of the Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. The book itself is The Raven and the Reindeer by T. Kingfisher. I've read a couple of T. Kingfisher's, no three, three of T. Kingfisher's fairy tale retellings of the past and adored them all. She is such a clever writer. She often has like a little bit of like snark and humour to her books but they can get quite dark at the same time and I love that combination. The Raven and the Reindeer even better may I say is a queer retelling of Hans Christian Andersen's fairy tale. So we have the main events which is that a uh, young girl's best friend, the boy she loves, is taken away by the Snow Queen um, to live in her palace and she of course is determined to go and save him. On the way she meets a huntress in the woods who becomes her companion and her assistant in this whole adventure and it's so again atmospheric, is that word going to be used a million times in this video? Probably. There's something particularly about winter appropriate reads where atmosphere feels like top priority and that is definitely true of this book. Again, very cold climate, we are literally on a journey to the Snow Queen's palace where hearts freeze over and emotions are destroyed. It's, it's very much um, a retelling of the original storyline and I thought it was so magical, loved the queer elements, loved the little twists that T. Kingfisher made and she just has a very unique, very engaging voice as a writer. Now my next one might not be as obvious a choice but for me it just felt like the kind of book that suited this time of year and that's Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi and this book is set in Tokyo. It was originally written in Japanese, it's not a translated one but it's definitely more of a novella so it veers away from that chunkier book that I was mentioning earlier. But this is such like a slow 
quiet book and there is something about that that again feels quite appropriate. I feel like this time of year is quite reflective. It can also be quite difficult for a lot of us and it can sort of tap into a lot of raw, raw emotions which I feel like this book does but in a really beautiful, really heartwarming, really um, cathartic way. It's about this little cafe in Tokyo where customers can time travel except there are a lot of caveats. So first of all, there's a time limit. You have to come back from your time travel before the coffee gets cold, which doesn't give you very long. You cannot move, so you have to remain in your seat the whole time you're time traveling, and you can only time travel back or forward in time in the cafe in that exact spot. And there is one seat that allows this time travel. So basically, you're, the only people who are gonna to want to time travel in this cafe are people who've been there before, or who know people who have been there before, and they might want to visit them or visit them in the future. So it gets less custom than you might expect. And we follow a cast of different characters including staff and customers, regular customers and perhaps a few newer customers who are dealing with various different things including like family, loss, illness, grief, relationship troubles, all of those things that they feel they might get some insight into if they were to travel in time back or forwards in this cafe. And like I said it's quite quiet it's quite slow, there's no drama, it's not incredibly sci-fi heavy, it's just a sort of method through which the author explores all these emotions and they are a lot of emotions that I feel like come up around this time of year but like I said I think this book handles it in the kind of way that is very cathartic, it's um, very sensitive and just very very beautiful and I love that we follow a group of different characters and all of their different experiences um, and the only thing that connects them is this cafe so I just feel like this one would be very appropriate in winter. Next up is another obvious winter one and that is Hogfather by Terry Pratchett. So this is one of the books set in Terry Pratchett's Discworld and the protagonists of this novel are Death, as in the anthropomorphic personification of Death, the Grim Reaper, and his granddaughter, Susan, who is the daughter of his adopted daughter. So Susan is the granddaughter of Death. And they are characters that you meet in previous books in the Discworld, although I personally don't have any strong feelings on where you jump into the Discworld, it's where you feel comfortable and I feel where the um, plots sound intriguing to you and I don't think you need a lot of background to read Hogfather but at the same time if you would like more guidance then do leave a comment down below or check out my video all about the topic. There's also a film adaptation of this one which I think again just sort of proves that you can kind of experience the story by itself because they haven't adapted any of the other death novels and in this one we follow Death who has decided to take over from the Hogfather this year who is the Discworld's equivalent of Santa Claus and in a sense there's a little bit of that nightmare before Christmas to the storyline because of that whole Death Hogfather crossover plus Susan who is one of my favourite Discworld characters of all time. She's so sassy, she's so fierce, she's so clever and dangerous and I love her. I mean granddaughter of Death who could be a cooler character? I love Terry Pratchett's Discworld, as you know, they're comedic fantasy novels all set in the same world that Terry Pratchett created, um, some of which are more connected than other as as, as the stories go, um, but Hogfather just felt like one that had to be in this video. A slightly more random one, one that just felt personally to me appropriate for this time of year is Hagseed by Margaret Atwood. I think this is another one that deals with quite emotional themes, it very much deals with grief. Our protagonist, a man who works in the theatre industry has lost his daughter and he lost his daughter years and years ago and he's been dealing with that grief ever since and sort of imagining her alongside him. It's also a retelling of The Tempest and the main crux of the novel takes place in a prison. So our main character has gone to this prison to basically teach the English slash drama course at the prison um, to sort of give the prisoners something to do, possibility of earning a qualification, and they decide to put on a performance of The Tempest. And because of that, I do not think you need to know or be familiar with The Tempest as a novel to read this book because it gives you all of the important bits of Tempest information you need to fully understand the book, but it is really fun understanding all those layers of sort of intertextuality because you have the main plotline which is our main character dealing with his grief going into this prison um, teaching these prisoners and also dealing with some enemies he has back from the uh, drama industry that he's recently left and that has mirrors to The Tempest. You then have the fact that they're performing The Tempest and it's lots of layers in that sense and I really really like it. I 
I'm a big fan of Margaret Atwood's writing. She is an excellent, excellent writer. This is our one that's very atmospheric, very evocative, very um, thematic, and I just really, really enjoyed this book. It took me by surprise how much I ended up enjoying it, and I think it's one you could just scroll away in and get completely absorbed in for like a couple of evenings and zoom through without sort of looking up too many times, which is quite nice in these darker days. So I loved Hagseed. So I also wanted to include a traditional collection of fairy tales in this video, and I have a few favourites. Um, um, but the one I decided to go for was The Turnip Princess, and other newly discovered fairy tales by Franz Xaver von Schoenwerth. <laughs> had to double check um, the uh, collector's name and this was only compiled and released in English by Penguin a few years ago like the title implies newly discovered fairy tales and it's so fun to think that we're constantly discovering new stories from different time periods and that we haven't exhausted classical literature and fairy tales and folk tales and mythology I love that and this is just a really captivating collection. I love traditional fairy tales. I love seeing the overlap between stories from different cultures and the similarities, but also the little tweaks and differences. So you might have two stories that are very similar to Cinderella, but one has something particularly different about it that you've never read before. And I think that that's wonderful. And I really, really liked this collection in particular. The stories themselves were collected together in the 1800s um, by the author who was Bavarian. It's just really fun, really whimsical and just nice to be introduced to new and familiar fairy tales, so yeah. Two more however, and the first one is one that I actually think is only available as an audiobook, and that is Beautiful by Juliet Marillier. Yes, I've squeezed in a Juliet Marillier. <laughs> this is a standalone Juliet Marillier novella, and it's a retelling of the Nordic fairy tale East of the Sun, West of the Moon, which already sort of gives me slightly colder vibes. I mean, it is set in part on a mountain top. It's a little bit chilly. Um, I also think there's something quite appropriate about fairy tales and fairy tale retellings come this time of year. So in this one, we are actually following the goblin princess from the fairy tale, who is one of the antagonists in the original. But it imagines if she was effectively a pawn of her mother's, she didn't want to be involved in the original plot. And it's about her finding herself and finding her people and breaking free of her mother and I love that redemption arc. I think it's so beautiful to see um, her embrace goblin society, to find herself, to find power in herself, to find confidence in herself and also to just redeem this character who is painted as a bit of an antagonist in the original fairy tale but when you see things from her side in an imagined version, you can really understand how all these things happened and how unfortunate her circumstances were as well. So I really, really enjoyed that. It's quite whimsical and magical and very, very, very atmospheric. <laughs> Juliette Marillier always paints a very, very vivid world, builds a very vivid world in her fancy novels. Then lastly, we do have a slightly cheeky one because I will admit I've not entirely finished it, but it's How the Duke Stole Christmas, which is a collection of historical romance short stories by different authors. So I haven't finished this one, like I mentioned. I've only read a third of the book, but I'm already enamored and it's just so appropriate that I wanted to mention it even though I hadn't had a chance to read all the stories and I can still vouch for at least a third of it. So sorry about that if it's a little bit cheeky. Um, but I love myself a historical romance novel. I just think they are so captivating, especially if the well <laughs> um, only if the characters are endearing and I like them if I don't like the characters then no go but if they have characters I love and I care about and I'm invested in the relationship I get so wrapped up in their storyline and that is particularly nice at this time of year so I love that this collection is obviously very very winter appropriate it's very Christmas heavy obviously that obviously you don't have to celebrate Christmas to still read and enjoy this collection but I thought it was worth mentioning because it collects together some of my favourites in particular like Tessa Dare so it may also be a way to introduce yourself to some new um, historical romance writers if you haven't read them before. But those are all of my winter reading recommendations in the dark even though it's not even late. Um, I hope you have found a new book to check out from these. I would love 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 to hear if you have any books you would recommend for this time of year in the comments down below or if you've even read any of the ones that I mentioned and what you thought of them. But until next time happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye everyone!